These are 100 Trump days. It's like dog years, you know, so it's, we have more time. It's really unrealistic to expect any meaningful trade uh, events to take place in 100 days. Same is true for the North Korean, Korean nuclear situation. So we just got to contain our expectations here. There are, there are small things, as you said, and there's the story about the steel tariffs, which have huge political uh, advantage, uh, but uh, not an awful lot's been done, or will be in the next 100 days. Gordon, let, let, let's start with trade and then maybe talk about North Korea, too. But, but when it comes to trade, where do you think we stand just in terms of the relationship between the two countries? It, it, there was a lot of rhetoric that got thrown out in the election and in the very early days, but it seems like we're working together a little more closely. What do you think happens from here? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, during these 100-day negotiations, they're sputtering, as a number of news organizations have talked about. And I think trade relations are going to get testy for a number of reasons. One of them is that President Trump clearly linked trade to North Korea. Uh, the, Nor the Chinese have disappointed him on his their efforts to disarm uh, Pyongyang. And so I think that he's going to take it out on trade. And also, you've got to remember that the Republicans faced 2018 in places like Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Michigan. Um, you know, the Chinese have been dragging their feet, especially on credit cards. This has really been unacceptable. And although I understand the need to contain expectations, we've been doing that for decades and it's really gotten us nowhere. So I think that the impatience is really important right now to show China that we actually are going to defend American trade interests. And if we don't do this, we're going to get leaders who are more anti-trade than Sanders and Trump. So I think that right now is a good time to get China to hold to its trade promises. John, Gordon is of the opinion that, look, the reason China has been so successful is because its trading partners have allowed it to develop these predatory trading practices over the last couple of decades. As he just said, he thinks patience is running thin. Do you, do you agree with that assessment? Uh, well, of course. The, uh, I, I think that we've, uh, we, we've got to concentrate on opening markets. And uh, it would be good to do that faster rather than slower. It's also true that the trade account is exactly the mirror image of the capital account. And when capital tries to get out of China, uh, it has impacts on trade uh, as well. And uh, the numbers that just came out had imports rising 17% annual rate in China and exports 11%, both big numbers. So the recent story is really Chinese growth returning. And that growth returning is having a big impact on, uh, on their imports, including from us, uh, especially agricultural uh, imports. Although some of those same numbers also showed that Chinese trade with North Korea increased in the first half of the year. Uh, and that came to, as a surprise to a lot of people, including the president, who was tweeting about that, too. So, so John, let's that's, go to North Korea. True. What progress are we yeah, or that, are that, we not making? Not. We're not making. You know, I've actually worked in North Korea on more than one uh, occasion, and it is, it is an abysmal, abysmal place. It's gotten worse since the uh, fat kid has taken over, and uh, not going to get better until this family is uh, ultimately removed from power, which I think will happen sooner or later. Chinese trade with North Korea has always been there. Uh, Heilongjiang province especially uh, has uh, oil refined products going into North Korea, uh, I, uh, China has been helping. I don't understand why China has been so slow to put pressure on North Korea. I understand there are historical reasons why that's difficult, but this is not in China's interest what's happening right now. Gordon, does China understand that? No, I, I don't think they do. I mean, short term, you know, they've been weaponizing North Korea by transferring equipment for their ballistic missile program and probably technology for North Korea's most advanced missiles. There's also nuke cooperation, which is really important to us. And so they're weaponizing North Korea to destabilize South Korea, Japan and us. And so I think the Trump administration is starting to lose patience with this. You know, China short term gets a lot of benefits from North Korean provocations because we stop talking about trade, South China Sea, predatory trade practices, all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at this point, um, we got to stop this dynamic. And I think the Trump administration is, is indeed um, on that road. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.